My name is Colin, and I have three tips that you should follow when creating rule books for event-driven Ansible. Now, tip number one may seem kind of obvious, but it is really difficult to write a rule against an event that you have never seen before. So, uh, tip number one is read the manual. Now, if you're trying to integrate with events from something like Dynatrace, go to their website, go to their documentation, and look up how they define their payloads. And most of the time, you'll see something like this. An ex example, it's an example JSON payload that you can expect to receive from their server service that will tell you a lot about the data structure of that event. Somebody else like Big Panda is really good about this too and they also have these sample webhook payloads that you can go in and start to write, start to wireframe your rule books against the sample payloads that are documented by these uh, services that we're integrating with as event producers. So tip number one again is just just read the documentation. Tip number two is pretty loaded. It's actually going to be about three tips in one, uh, something like that. But uh, so the, the first part is use the command line interface Ansible Rulebook. And this makes it a lot easier to iterate quickly on your rule books as you're developing them because they come with really easy to use flags that are going to give you a lot more information about the execution of your rule book, what events are received, which ones are active upon so on and so forth. Now one of these incredibly useful invaluable flags in, in Ansible rulebook is pr dash dash print events. Now print events is used to print out the event regardless of whether or not it matches a rule within your rulebook. So to demonstrate this I have a single rule within my rulebook and it's looking for the condition of event.title is defined and when I send a payload I'm just not going to define event.title. It's simply not going to exist. Regardless, I'm going to see that event incoming on Ansible rulebook and see what could have been. So let's go ahead and run the command line version, Ansible rulebook with the print events flag, and I'll send a sample payload off screen and see what it looks like when we run this with the dash dash print events flag. So there it is. Let's expand this. This is the entire event payload coming from my event source that I sent. And you can see it has the content of message. Ansible is super cool. And now I can take this entire payload and write my rules and my conditions against this payload. So um, you know, first part of this tip, use the, uh, the, the command line Ansible rulebook, use the print events flag. And now sort of a weird tip is this, this isn't always going to apply, but we can start to introduce event filters here. Now event filters will take the event dictionary from our source and then pass them through these filters. Now, most of the time event filters are going to be used to translate that event or transform that event dictionary. But in this case, all I'm doing with this event filter is taking that entire event dictionary and sending it somewhere else. And this is useful if I'm receiving a bunch of events one after the other and I need to evaluate it. I just need to go and review all of this event payload. So for this one, this is a custom event filter that I've written. You can use it yourself or you can write your your own better one, I'm sure, uh, but it's called poster and it takes the event dictionary and sends it to this particular URL. I use webhook.site because it's really easy to stand up and then it sorts all of my payloads on the left hand side and I can review all of the payloads that I've received. So for instance, here's content.message, Ansible is cool, there's that pay test payload that I just sent Ansible rulebook. So again, this is another way to get more familiar with your event data structure so that you can write rules against this payload. Okay, so tip number three is something, um, I don't leave this in all of my production rule books, but it's definitely something that's very useful when I'm developing rule books. And this is to catch all remaining events that I'm not currently handling within my rule book. 
So remember I have this one rule up here which is event.title is defined and again I'm never I'm never going to define event.title. I have something very staunchly opposed to populating or defining event.title so I'm not going to do it. What I can do is run a, a second rule here. This will catch all events regardless. So it, it's really useful if this rule was written incorrectly. In this case it's never going to fire so let's just pretend I wrote it incorrectly. But the condition in my second rule is event.meta is defined. Now for every incoming event on any source within event-driven Ansible, event.meta is always going to be defined. So I can always rely on this particular particular rule to catch any events that I'm not handling above this rule in my rule book. Because remember, events are evaluated in the sequence they appear in the rule book. So the event coming in on my source plugin is going to ch be checked against this rule first. It's not going to evaluate to true because I hate defining event.title, but it is going to evaluate to true for this rule because event.meta is all always defined. So this one will be um, executed with the action of debug. Let's take a look at that again. And actually, oh, this is bugging me. I said catch remaining events. And that's going to bug me too much. I need to correct that. So let's go with that. All right, save the rule book and we'll go ahead and execute Ansible rule book with the print events flag again. So I've just sent my payload in the background. This time what we'll see is the original event printed because I have print events uh, flag passed to the command line. And then also also the debugged event because it's going to match on catch remaining events. And so here it is. So let's just walk through this really quickly. Here is the original event right here um, with content message. Ansible is super cool. And then we have the debug output for this trapped event. And I know exactly what rule caught this particular event because the rule key in debug is populated with the name of the rule. So I can see R2 catch remaining events matches the name of my catch all event. And again, this is just one of these ways where I can capture all of the events and understand what might have been. Is there something that I've trapped within this rule book coming from that specific source that is going to be useful for me to understand later on? Maybe it's an event that I'm not ready to handle today, but I want to handle it with some automated remediation later on down the line. There you have it, three tips. Remember, read the documentation for the source provider that you're you're pulling events from. Remember to use the command line utility. And then again, in the debugging process, in the de development process, catch all remaining events. Have you created any rule books yourselves? What's working for you? I really wanna know, so let us know in the comments and let's chat. Thank you very much.